thanks so much for having me at uh, what I think has already been such an inspiring day today, thinking a little bit uh, about planetary boundaries and tipping points. And I want to challenge us for a moment to really think beyond gradual change, because this is what we need to do when we think about tipping points. And I think it's helpful before we um, start thinking about the future um, of, of the research around this to also uh, look back. And um, what you see here is basically just a snapshot in time, a really short sequence of what Johan showed us this morning, which is this really powerful timeline of Earth's history. So if we were to compare Earth's history to the sequence of a day, then this is really just the last few seconds of that history that we're looking at right here. So this is the temperature evolution since the last glacier maximum about 20,000 years ago. And whenever I look at this graph, there are two things that really strike me. For one, the Holocene has been such a stable climate for us humans to evolve and to thrive. And the second thing is the difference between an ice age, what we see about 20,000 years ago, and today, that's roughly three to four degrees of global mean temperature change. And that may not seem like much, but what we're facing today is actually the same amount of warming, potentially, or even more than that, in a much, much shorter time scale. So I really think it's safe to say that, for one, humans have become um, a planetary force, a geological force, and two, that we're at a very special point in Earth's history. Now enter the tipping points. We of course know that there are several parts of the climate system that react in a very non-linear manner to these temperature changes. And here you see just a compilation of all those important um, components at a, a continental or subcontinental scale that belong to these so-called tipping elements in the climate system. And um, these comprise cryosphere entities, so the two ice sheets on Greenland and Antarctica, as well as sea ice and permafrost, um, as well as large-scale circulation patterns, such as the thermohaline ocean circulation or the Indian summer monsoon, and also biosphere components, including, for instance, the Amazon rainforest, but also the coral reefs. And if we now put our current knowledge of these tipping thresholds, beyond which we can expect um, some really qualitative change in these systems into that timeline from the last glacial maximum to today and into the future, then I think it's really safe to say that the right climate target was agreed in Paris, and in fact, that the right planetary boundary was put forward in terms of climate um, yeah, 10 years ago. Um, because what you see here is that there are several parts of the climate system, including West Antarctica, Greenland, the Arctic summer sea ice, the Alpine glaciers, and coral reefs, who are already at risk of transgressing their critical threshold, even within that Paris range of 1.5 to 2 degrees of warming. Now what's new, and um, Johan hinted at this this morning as well, what's new is that, in fact, we may have already transgressed a tipping point in the Amundsen Basin in West Antarctica. And this goes back to these observations here. So what you can see here is, first of all, that all the glaciers in the Amundsen Basin have accelerated over the past decades. And secondly, and this is what you see now in these brownish colors, is that they have all retreated into the deeper valleys behind. And this gives rise to a positive feedback mechanism, so really self-accelerated ice loss from this basin. And if this entire basin were to drain into the ocean, that would already lead to sea level rise of roughly one meter. You probably know that Antarctica altogether holds enough ice to raise global sea level by 58 meters. So this is really just the tip of the iceberg. There are several other basins and tipping points that we need to think about. But I think this has really moved um, tipping from this sort of theoretical notion and something that happened in the deep past into something that has become reality for us humans as well. And I think this change in, in that notion, our perception of tipping elements, changed along with it. What's also new is we start thinking about interactions of tipping points. So this is from the Dominos project uh, that I'm leading together with Jonathan Dongis at the Potsdam Institute. And here we're thinking just about, um, not just about interactions between the climate tipping elements, but also beyond that, about potential social tipping components and how the climate impacts that we already see 
uh, or even the anticipated climate impacts might change our thinking and thereby greenhouse gas emissions and feed right back um, and close this loop with the climate system. And um, if we think of the role of several of um, these tipping elements in potential cascades um, and their interaction, then one thing becomes really apparent, and that is that they have very different roles. So, for instance, the ice sheets tend to be initiators of potential tipping cascades or dominoes, domino effects, whereas, for instance, the ocean circulation is sort of a, a mediator, just bringing this around the globe. Yeah, and this brings us back to that really Earth system thinking, thinking about trajectories of the Earth system in the Anthropocene. And you all know this, uh, this graph from the so-called hothouse paper, basically so, uh, saying that there might be a planetary threshold that if we transgress it, would really lead us into a much warmer state of the Earth system, something that we have never experienced before. And the question now is, is there also this stabilized Earth system and what would bring us into that? So, um, yeah, this really leaves us with two questions, I think. One, how resilient is the Earth system still? Uh, because I think most of us in this room are convinced that there is still is a lot of resilience in the Earth system. And secondly, how can a stabilized Earth be achieved? Thank you very much. Great, thanks. <coughs> thanks, for before, before you sit down, can, can you go back to the slide showing the temperature ranges for the various tipping elements, about four or five slides back? Just want to ask you a question. Yes. So that was published in 2016. We're three years down the track. Would you like to comment on how some of that might have changed in terms of our understanding of where they might be vulnerable? Yeah. Yeah, so that's a very important question. So even three years um, after, there have already been quite substantial changes to this graph. And the general observation that we also saw this morning is that um, we have moved those tipping ranges. First of all, they've become smaller and smaller with time. So from IPCC assessment report to assessment report, they've become smaller. But also, the critical temperature, the lower bound, has also decreased. So that really brings us closer and closer um, into, this, into these critical ranges. And I think one of the reasons is that we have really started to think about interactions of these elements and um, how, for instance, tipping of Greenland or changes in Greenland, melting from Greenland, could affect the ocean circulation. So that brings down several of these ranges through those interactions. Great, thank you.